All right, welcome back. It's a very busy weekend in uh, boxing, uh, October the 14th and the 15th here in the States. Well, for broadcasted, broadcasted boxing. But the fight we're going to talk about today um, is Tim Zhu taking on Brian Mendoza for the WBO title. Tim Zhu is now officially the WBO champion at 154 pounds, no longer the interim once uh, Jermel Charlo stepped into the ring against Sul Canelo Alvarez. He's going to be taking on former interim champion. I guess you can say he's still interim champion until he steps into the ring. Uh, Brian Mendoza, who got an upset win over um, uh, Sebastian Fendora back in April of this year, stopped him in round number seven when he was down on the cards. Uh, the fight's going to be taking place in the uh, the Gold Coast, right, Big J? That is correct, mate, at the Gold Coast Convention Center in Bull Beach. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, seats about six thousand. They've got there. Sorry, you said the seats about six thousand, right? Yeah, about six, six and a half. Yeah, same, same um, uh, event that for uh, Zoo or Compo. So same, okay. same venue. It's going to be uh sixty dollars fifty nine ninety five over on a uh, pay per view in the oceanic in the oceanic area via main event and uh, Foxtel and KO Sports. Over here in the States, you're going to be able to watch on Showtime. I have it here on the screen starting at 10.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, October the 14th. Uh, it's going to be live. It's going to be a uh, Sunday afternoon card for those over in uh, Australia. Over here in the States, we're going to get uh, Sam Goodman taking on Miguel Flores, and which should be a uh, good fight as the uh, co-featured a two-fight card here featured um in the states oh you want to gloss over the undercard real quick big j before we jump into uh the fight and predictions yeah let's gloss over the undercard because it's, it's a pretty solid undercard so um yeah we'll gloss over it you've got sam goodman taking on flores is that for any sort of title for super band no. or is that just a keep busy fight yeah keep busy fight yeah, it's just busy. a keep busy fight yeah you've got chanel dargan taking on um who's chanel dargan taking amber on? amber amelia Oh, that should be a good fight, actually. That should be a good fight. Is that weight? Is that 122 again? Is that right? Uh, it doesn't say what weight. It's what? Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, Super Bowl. One, 122. That'll be a good fight. Chanel Dargan, she comes out all guns blazing. So I think okay. it's only a four-round fight. But expect those two ladies to just to kick the shit out of each okay, other. Okay, what's those, the fight? Uh, uh, we, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, nah, because those women don't fuck around. They'll, they'll beat the shit out of each other. Okay, so, and uh, Wade Ryan is uh, also on the undercard as well. Yeah, Wade Ryan's taking on. Uh, who's he taking on? I can't remember his uh, name. Now. Sergey Vorobev. Vorobev. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Reliable, Wade Ryan. Always a good fight. Doesn't matter if he wins or loses. He still puts up a incredible performance. But the fight of the night, for my mind, will be Nathaniel May versus uh, Jackson England. Um, I think that will probably be the surprise of the card. Okay. So that that would be my, so that would be my prediction. That's at one thirty, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, th I think that will be probably the fight of the night. So um, you were telling me before we started the uh, video that the consensus is that uh, Mendoza is not going to have a chance against uh, Tim Zhu. Uh, Mendoza is 22 and two with 16 KOs, 29 years old. He's listed at a five foot 10, 70 inch reach. Uh, biggest fights of his career, of course, the biggest win of his career was against Sebastian Fendora, and then before that, former unified champion Jason Rosario. He lost to Jesus Ramos, who just last week lost to uh, in a controversial decision to uh, Erickson Lubin. Uh, he's fought Thomas Lamana. Basically, he's got a very he's got a solid resume at uh um 154 pounds but in my personal opinion i'm wondering if this one of those fights where uh tim zoo can have a bad night not that mendoza can beat him you know the type of fight i'm talking about like where sometimes fighters have a fight where it's like ah you know they look like shit they got exposed to kind of similar or not as bad as when uh maxi hughes uh did the cambosos even though i feel maxi hughes should have won you know, I just think that Tim Zhu's due for one of those type of bad nights. Um, and with all the pressure that he has and now being an actual full champion, a uh, email champion, by the way, unfortunately for him, it just makes you wonder. Um, um, and you said he looks he's look, he looks better than ever. I got some clips here of him training. But, you know, I just have a bad feel about this fight. 
oh, well, I feel bad all he wants. I think he's going to kick the living shit out of him. I think he'll be fine. Yeah. I don't think, even though it's even though it's a running trend that email champions, especially Australian email champions, in their first offence they get friggin' annihilated. Um, you know, Andrew Maloney is the most recent example of that. He was an email champion, and James uh, Joshua Franco beat the daylights out of him in that first fight. But um, you know, Tim Zoo's not Andrew Maloney, so I think he'll. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll make an emphatic statement. Mm. I reckon he'll break him down methodically over eight or nine rounds, and then just clean him up. Yeah. So I'm not saying that Mendoza doesn't have a chance. He's got a punches. He's got a punches chance. Um, but you know, I, I think I think Tim will break him down. Yeah, you know, methodically over nine rounds and then finish him off in the ninth. That's my prediction. Here's a question. Uh, just flat out, uh, do you think Tim Zoo right now is the best 154-pounder? Oh, easy. Easy. But still, um, he still hasn't beaten Charlo. So until he beats Charlo, um, he's not number one yet because he hasn't beaten Charlo. He's number two at the moment. He's number two. Uh, uh, I'm wondering. I believe that he could kick. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Now you go. No, I'm I'm wondering, you know, um, if Charlo's still going to have it when he comes back to 154, because he says he's going back down to 154, not 160 after fighting Canelo at 168. You know, um, uh, like well, if I was to well, pick I was today, said, was just... go ahead. I, I think I think that Tim, I, I think that Tim that... can edge him. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, that was just a con job to get a cash grab. That was a cash grab con job, so yeah. everyone fell for it. So that was just bullshit. But I think if if Charlo fought Zoo today, Zoo would get him. I'm not saying, you know, I think I think that he would actually, because I, I don't think Charlo's got the heart in it no more. I, I, I think, as you said, after he became undisputed, he's like, oh well, you know, I've done I've done what I wanted to achieve. He got the big payday. Yeah. So where's the money? Didn't, didn't Hagler say it? It's extremely hard to get out of bed when you sleep in silk sheets. Yeah. Didn't Hagler say that? Yeah, he's been so, undisputed and got the payday. And, you know, and also with, with the performance he put on against Canelo, you know, it makes you wonder, like, if he's still going to be able to come into the ring with that same fire. Well, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, he puts on a piss poor performance like that. It's like he's got $10 million. Why would he even bother? Yeah. Like, ah, you know. So, so uh, take your time out, like the video, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy and Big J at Old Mate Big uh, J. Uh, Jamel Charlo, he still has his WBC and WBA title. I'm guessing sometime this week we're going to get some full clarity from the WBC or about that WBC interim title that Mendoza has. It's currently not on the line against Tim Zhu. Uh, but, in a, but Jamel Charlo... I'm, I, I think that if he returns to 154, if he doesn't take a year off, and let's say, for example, I mean, he didn't take no damage in the Canelo fight, so, you know, he can fight sometime already at the beginning of the year. But let's say if he comes back and he wants to keep his WBC, WBE, and IBF and try to be a two-time undisputed champion, he has to come back and fight Bakram Murtazaliev immediately. The WBA is not going to strip him. Um, I think Mendoza, and this had to be maybe a chess move by Al Heyman, by Mendoza fighting Tim Zhu, that frees up Jamel Charlo to hold on to that WBC longer because there's no mandatory. So, especially, mm-hmm. especially if Mendoza wins. Yeah. If if Mendoza wins, then he ain't going to worry about no WBC belt. So. Yeah. Uh, it, it's. It, I mean, it, win or lose, uh, win or lose, I don't think he's going to lose his WBC belt because the WBC has been carrying on like a pork chop of, of late of recent mm. years. WBA, they're not going to do anything. The IBF should have stripped his ass a long time before now, so yeah. I'm actually a little bit surprised by them. Um, but, yeah, once I think once the zoo fight happens, uh, maybe before the IBF might go right out, uh, you got to fight Parker and Mendes Ali or lo- lose another belt. So... Yeah, because he hasn't been officially ordered yet. And Murtazaliev has been the mandatory for three years, but he hasn't been officially ordered to fight Charlo. Like, you know, they just Almost been, four. Yeah, crazy. You know, just holding up so, the whole um um division. So the the next question is, do you think that Charlo versus Zoo is still is is a big fight? And do you feel two part question, do you feel that um the fight would be bigger in in Australia than it would be in Vegas? Oh, yeah, Charlo I think it Zoo. would be a bigger fight. 
I think it would be a massive, massive fight in Australia, but I don't see Charlo coming out here. I mean, unless we chucked him like, well, it took $10 million to get Pacquiao out here. He just got $10 million to fight Canelo. So he would probably say, well, if you want me out here, get $10 million. But they come out with the money. Can no so, limit come out with the money? You think main event, no limit can come well, out with it? Well, I don't think they could. And the biggest problem is, is that you've got to, to get $10 million, you've got to seat 60,000 people in the stadium to get it done. We got mm-hmm. forty for George and George and Haney were both not really household names when that happened. So you don't think Tim can Tim do is it? Well established. Tim is. I mean, Tim is. You know what? But yeah. I think if they put it in Sydney, in a footy stadium, yeah, I reckon they could get pretty bloody close. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's no stadium. There is a stadium in the Gold Coast, but it seats like thirty thousand. Mm-hmm. For this fight, you need fifty. You need fifty thousand. You know, you're going to need 50 to get it done. And uh, it's, it has to happen in Sydney because there's, there's a there's a football stadium big enough to do it there. So, yeah, Sydney or possibly the Gold Coast, but the Gold Coast doesn't have a 50,000. Brisbane, like maybe at Suncorp again. Maybe they go back to Suncorp. Suncorp, Brisbane's only 160k uh, up the road from the Gold okay. Coast. So well, he's got to do, he's gotta do something next. Like, yeah, I mean, Charlie can't sit on his uh, on his hands anymore. And Tim's edging just to get it. So, but also the division is is moving. For example, you have uh, Josh Kelly, who's ranked number one by the WBO. You have um, Xander Zayas, top ranked fighter, who's creeping up on a uh, title shot very soon. Um, you got uh, Erickson Lubin out there, and I guess you can say Tim Zhu is tied to PBC, so he might be moving with them along wherever they go after they leave Showtime, as because he does need a uh, a stateside broadcaster. So um, that's right. You know, so but there's also Crawford and Spence looking Crawford to move and up. Spence, right. even Jesus Ramos. You know, despite him losing to Lubin. But that was a controversial. Uh, a lot of people thought that he that won. That was bullshit. You know, you got Murtazaliev, Jack Kuke. So you know, he has fights out there, and 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 the only person that's stopping him, I would pick him to beat all of those guys that I've named, except Crawford, and 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 I'm not picking him to beat Spence yet. Uh, Jamel Charlo, I'm not there yet. I'm getting close, but I'm not there yet. I would say it was. I say it's a 50-50 fight, but he has a very good chance to be undisputed at 154 pounds. Also, we were talking about maybe getting a rival. Who knows? I I mean, it's going to be either Charlo or either Errol Spence. Um, Terrence Crawford's not going to fight him. Maybe. If the... Terrence Crawford will fight um, Zoo if he wants that WBO belt. But I don't think he wants the belt no, anymore. I'm, like I, I, He's already talking, like, you know, about the paydays. He already said he don't even want to fight uh, uh, Charlo anymore, and Charlo still has three of the belts, and he would have at least two, the WBC and the WBA. Mm, mm, that's Well, the only money fight for Crawford is Canelo, and Canelo would beat the piss out of him. Yeah. So, so, so he needs to stay as far away from Canelo as possible. So I'm I'm hoping that we'll be able to get some um, uh, more information uh, throughout the fight week on uh, the possible plan for Tim Zhu and if there is some type of dialogue for him to fight Charlo. Because one thing about a lot of uh, fighters these days, especially with PBC fighters, uh, when they take a loss, they usually go on a long layoff up to it up to eighteen months or so. You know what's happened to me? Well, he doesn't fighters. have to. Yeah, but he does, he's 33 years old. He can't go doing that. But look, so, all he's too old for that shit. I mean, yeah, but they've been doing it. Mm, well, you know, they, they've been they, doing it. It's, it's uh, so many act inactive fighters, you know, that a fight for once a year or once every two years or 18 months. You know, it's too many to name right now. Yeah, that's right. From the but, Keith uh, Thurmans to the Danny Garcia, all those guys. Yeah, but then again, he's got his $10 million, so you really think he gives a rat's ass? Yeah, exactly. You know, so we're going to see what so, happens uh, um, uh, with that IBF belt over the next several weeks because uh, Tim Zhu has shown that he has a very powerful team behind him when it comes to uh, uh, look how they jumped the line over uh, Michael Meta uh, Kabanov to get that WBO. You know, so, yeah, that's right. So, and I, I think Tim... I think Tim, after this fight, if there's no one else, he should give that bloke his shot because I think he deserved it. Yeah, they're going to they're so, going to go after that IBF. I I can see it. Yeah, well, yeah, that that's right. Well, if if um, Aliyev doesn't get it, which he should, um, he'll fight Jack Coke or fight Tim in a 
vacant unification ban. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think there's been, awesome. no, they're not going to do a vacant. Uh, the 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 IBF top fifteen would be in an uproar. They're not going to do for a vacant. Um, Martizali is going to have to beat Kuke, uh to get his hands on that belt. But and aren't then, they doing it? In the, what division are W uh, IBF and WBA doing vacant titles? Is that one sixty, one thirty? What is it? I don't remember. What's I don't, the division where two blacks are fighting for two vacant titles? I remember. I remember IBF it's happened WBA. before, but it's not going to. I don't. I don't see it happening in this situation. And it, yeah, and, well, and, and it know, rarely happens. It happens right. in women's boxing all the time. Yes. You know, but not, yeah, but not but, in uh, male yeah, boxing. I mean, like you know, they can get sued. Yeah, I mean, in, 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 in the interest of fairness, I mean, this should be a unification bout for the WBC WBA titles. But anyway, that's that's what should be happening. Yeah, but, but you anyway, know, like, the yeah, w- but the WBC, like, they are not stripping Charlo. They'll make him a champion in recess before they strip him. That ain't happening. And yeah, now well, the Mendoza's, and but now the Mendoza's taking this shot um, and giving up his interim title. Charlo doesn't have a mandatory, mm. so he can hold on to that belt for another year now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like his brother, another freaking three years. Yeah. So. Uh, by the way, uh, 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 Jamel Charlo is going to be returning November the 25th on the undercard of uh, David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade against Jose Benavidez, a 147-pounder. Uh, he fought Terrence Crawford. He fought at 154. Um, against Danny Garcia, and he's now fighting Jamal Charlo at 160 pounds. Uh, closing thoughts? No, I'm just looking forward to Tim. I hope Tim methodically breaks this bloke down, cements his place, and um, somehow coaches Charlo to get in the ring, but I just don't see it happening. So I really don't. I, I think um, I think Charlo might just sit on the belt for a year and then retire, personally. So, because what yeah. else is he going to do? We'll see. So, uh, take your time out, like the video, and subscribe. We're going to be here uh, for the uh, final press conference and the weigh-in, which is going to be taking place 10 p.m. Eastern on a Wednesday night here in the States and Thursday night. Um, uh, and also, we're going to be here for fight night as well. Uh, it's going to be a very busy weekend in boxing between uh, Logan Paul and uh, Dylan Dennis, uh, James Beck, Ali Mahanala taking on uh, Vincenzo Gulatieri. Uh, and a couple other fights that I can't even mention the name right now. You got, um, hold on, let me check really quick. You got Keyshawn uh, Davis returning. Bo Max got out of jail. Uh, John Real Casimiro was, Casimiro was returning. A big women's rematch against Femke Hermans and uh, Mary Spencer. Uh, Cletus the Hebrew Hammer returns for those who care. And uh, Miguel Burchell also returns this weekend on the zone. Very busy weekend uh, in boxing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.